Kia! Welcome back. It's been a while since I've filmed a Let's Play or a first look or a demo video. Now that I have my brand new gaming PC, I figured the first game that I would give a nice first look into is Botany Manor. And Botany Manor will be released by the time this video comes out. And I just want to give a huge thanks to Charlie over at Streamers Connect for gifting me a key and giving me the opportunity to check out this game before it released. I am so in love with it. It is so good. I am so excited to show y'all a bit of the game. I'm gonna touch upon a little bit of the demo and then maybe do one or two plants afterwards because I don't wanna ruin the game for y'all, but I do wanna give you a little bit more past the demo since a lot of people covered the demo and there are videos out there on the demo but how about a little bit more afterwards without giving too many spoilers out? So let's check out this game together. I am going to be playing it on my PC with an Xbox controller. I find it so comforting to play with the Xbox controller. It works seamlessly. And I'll let you know my final thoughts at the very end of the video. So let's just get into it. Okay, so here's the game. It is stunning. I have it synced up. We're gonna be playing wirelessly and let's just get into it. I think the volume should be pretty good. I hope you guys enjoy the ambiance and the music that this game has to offer. And let's get started. Okay, 1890 Botany Manor, Somerset. Now, I will say that they do have accessibility controls if you want to change it a little bit for anybody that has motion sickness. They even have a motion sickness section. I, however, am somebody that doesn't get motion sickness and kind of just wails the camera around, so bear with me. Uh, but they do have the option if you want to change that up. So we're just gonna enjoy everything and look around. I have played this already, but doing this again just makes me feel, feel so good. I also love puzzle games. So we're just going to look around and see what we have. And you can also change it to the text overlay, which I think is so nice if you can't see this and if this doesn't look clear. Um, so we have a letter from a groundskeeper. Lady Arabella, we're so happy to have you back at Botany Manor. I hope you had a lovely trip. In your absence, I'm afraid some things in the manor have deteriorated, though I can assure you we tried our best to keep things in order. I hope it doesn't affect your research too much today. Bennett. Okay. Forgotten Flora, a herbarium by Arabella Green. Dear Arabella Green, thank you once again for submitting your book proposal, Forgotten Flora. Please send this empty herbarium back to us once you have completed your research and we'll be in touch with the potential offer. Sincerely, Mayflower Publishing House. Look at this. And these are the different chapters. And we don't have maps or anything to the grounds yet, so this is gonna be fun to explore together and then the first, the first part. Okay, is there anything else in here? Am I forgetting? If not, let's just start walking. Okay, a fresh start. One new plant added. So it says windmill wart. I want to grow the windmill wart to filter the smoggy air in my conservatory, but I'll need to research its temperature requirements first. So we have three clues. Seed packet location conservatory. Let's find the seed first. Okay. That's what it looks like. Potting instructions, place pot in saucer, add soil to pot, plant a seed, water the seed. Nothing in the back. So this is the seed. So let's get the soil. That's what it looks like and we'll water. Now, I don't know how to bloom it, which is what we need to find the clues. 
So let's just keep reading. Right here it's saying ideal soil temperatures for Mediterranean wildflowers. Okay. Those are the countries and then the location. So we have to figure out what kind of flower this is. Oh, let's open the herbarium. Important clues get added to the herbarium where you can assign them to plants. If you're stuck, tracking clues can help you organize and validate your research. So we did find the temperature chart. This is probably also a clue. And we see right there that the wind will ooh, the windmill wart is a volcanic flower. So we're going to have to look at the volcanic temperatures. Let me add that to clue. And let's read over here. Summer set falls victim to industrial smog. I can barely see. Horse bus driver refuses to work in these conditions. Okay. Postcard from Marianne. Dear Arabella, on my hike I came across the windmill wart, a flower that only grows in Sicily. Okay, we have a location. Some locals told me the flower has air purifying qualities, but due to its bespoke temperature requirements, the plant rarely blooms. Maybe the flower could help with the smog pollution in your conservatory. You're a friend and peer, Marianne. So we know that it's a volcanic flower. We know that there's a temperature chart that tells us location and the type of flower. So let's go back here. We know it's Sicily now. So if we go to Sicily and we look for a volcanic, it says 60 degrees Celsius. Um, this looks like it manages a temperature and this is a vent. Let's move the plant over to the vent. Okay. And it's on 20 right now. turn it on <laughs> it's so pretty it's like a little pinwheel oh and it's not foggy in here anymore The windmill wart naturally grows in volcanic soil, which is why it requires a soil temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. The bud contains air purifying qualities so the, so the flower can filter its environment from dense smog. That's cool. Okay. Let's head out. Ugh. I love this. Also, me being me, whenever I have to explore a game, I go everywhere. I don't even know if I'm following the prompt or not, I just, I go everywhere. Look at that. Like, is this twig important? No. But I'm enjoying it. Drawing from nature. Go to the other side and then we'll venture off to uh, the main area. So just look at this detail, like this little hole in the wall, the walkway for the flowers. Now my instinct is to go that way. So let's see. Ooh, okay. Let's collect the key. It's the entrance to the garden. And it says here, 
I'm currently busy researching. Please leave all deliveries in the gatehouse and ring the bell. And that's the bell. <laughs> okay. And this is Botany Manor. Oh, is it going to let me? Home of the Green family. Okay. Let's go this way. that manner. My dear friend, good luck on your trip. I would have loved to join you like in our younger days, but your tales about the trip will suffice when we next meet. I will never forget the Maria Jackson passage you once highlighted to me. In examining plates, you take the authority of others. Whereas in botany, as in all other things, we can make a little progress if we do not see for ourselves. Well, now you must travel and see some interesting specimens for yourself. I am inspired and look forward to hearing all about it. Your friend always, Eleanor. Oh, look at the little hat. Okay, let's not get too distracted. <laughs> Follow the prompt, follow the prompt. Okay, let's head inside. I'll have plenty of time to look around afterwards. Okay, so we have another seed collection here, which means we gotta find out what the next plant is. My dearest Arabella, I hope this letter finds you well as you set off for London on your important trip. The thought of you in the bustling city working on your ambitions both excites and worries me. Time has indeed passed, and yet your determination for your field remains inspiring to me. I never imagined all those years that we would be writing to each other in our fifth decade about such endeavors. I look forward to hearing about your progress, and I, of course, and of course, let me know how I can be of assistance upon your return. Your loving sister, Elizabeth. Okay. Um, we have to figure out what the plant, and you can pick up ducks. How cute is that? Look at this, what the plant is. So let's go figure out where this plant might be. Okay, chapter two, survivors of adversity. Two new seeds. So we're done with this. We have the Fulgaria and we have the Ash Plume. And we don't have any clues yet, so... This is about the family tree. Okay. Lady Arabella Green, I'm pleased to let you know that your family tree is complete, carefully tracing the history of your lineage. As per your request, I have altered the customary presentation, now displaying the maiden names of the ladies in your family, rather than their current names acquired through marriage. Should you require any further adjustments or have additional inquiries, I remain at your service. That's cool. So Arabelle is right there in the middle. And then I think the letter we read said Elizabeth was her sister. So her married name is Hopgood. Her maiden name is Green. Okay. Um, well, let's figure out where this plant is. All of this looks like it would be closed. Oh, this is glowing. Okay, we've got the Fulgaria seed. And some pictures here. This one's blurry. It was very dark, but you can see some of the flowers. And then this one, you can definitely see the flowers. Okay. Let's see if that was a clue. Okay, it was. So we have the plant with us now. Oh, those are her parents. 
So what I like to do, even though I probably shouldn't, is just prep the plant. Um, so I have it ready to go. Let's walk around. This doesn't seem to have a lock. Okay. Okay, and then here we can make some sort of a concoction. The art of painting. I just love the detail, to be very honest. Anything here? Oh, got things over here. Folklore. Some ancient Celtic tribes. Or Celtic. Is it Celtic? Celtic. Some ancient Celtic tribes practiced a coming-of-age ritual. This meant that when someone was considered old enough, it was time to prove themselves worthy of staying in the tribe. One of these rituals involved picking a flower in the woods, though not just any flower, of course. The gatherer had to find a fulgaria, for this flower is known to only bloom during thunderstorms. Keeping a cool head while lightning flashes were striking left and right of you was considered the ultimate test of courage. Okay, that's another clue. So probably we've got the photographs and we have lightning from the folklore. Oh, the sisters. We have another key to the back terrace. Okay. Lady Arabella, this past these past weeks I have been seeing lots of bright flashes coming from the back room of your house. It scares my cows immensely as they think a storm must be coming. My milk production has taken a hit because of this, and if you enjoy fresh milk in your morning cup of tea, I would advise you to keep the flashes to a minimum, Farmer Charles. Okay, so now the pictures are being mistaken for thunderstorms. And we've got some flash powder. And it says chemical composition, potassium and magnesium, two to one. Oh, we've got here to take the pictures and we have a plant spot so I'm gonna bring the plant over here and it says right here how to use it okay so it says fill the container with flash powder close the container press the button connected to the camera and the lumen flash lamp witness a bright flash Oh, okay, the flash powder bottle and the lamp. Okay, so that's all basically telling us we need to go take a picture of this plant. But I also have to make the concoction. So let me just have this ready. It was two potassium, one magnesium, I think. And let's just bring this over. I could just put it in right now. And let's go get the flower. Ooh. Where's the flower? Oh, it's this way. Hopefully I did the concoction right because I can't even remember. Oh, let's close. Can we close you? Yeah. All right. It's so pretty. The Fulgaria only grows during thunderstorms where the flashes of lightning provide the bright light the flower needs to bloom. 
Because of its dangerous growing conditions, so many people have witnessed its beauty. Okay. Can we look at it? <gasps> it's not bad. It's not bad. Fast I saw myself. Okay. Now the key that I have is to the back terrace. So this is where the demo would normally end. However, I'm going to have you guys join me for, for a flower or two. So let's do this flower and see how I feel. I don't want to ruin it too much. Okay, that was the kitchen. This was the back terrace. Oh, it just keeps getting better. Okay, that's locked from the other side. Like, come on, look at this. And we need to find the other flower, which I have no idea where it is. Maybe down here? Seems likely. This might be a tough case to crack. Okay, so it says here, a seed log, a summary of the seeds I've gathered this year and the location I found them at. Okay, so we're doing the ash plume, which was found in Wist Wistman's Wood. Is that a clue? Yeah. Wistman's Wood. That has a key opening, so we can't go that way. My dear friend Arabella, a friend of mine visited the Americas and brought back a pair of fabulous gray squirrels. They are the latest trend in garden decoration. All of my neighbors have sent for them as well. It was a great investment. The two squirrels have now started a big family, and my garden is full of the darling little critters. One thing I did notice is that I haven't seen a red squirrel in my garden for some time now. How odd. You must visit soon and see the squirrels for yourself. Yours ever. Ever yours, Grace. Okay. Is this locked from the other side? Okay. Thursday. Jimmy broke another mortar. That boy really needs to learn how to grind spices without breaking down my kitchen. Lady Arabella may not be the best pleased with me asking for a new one. The last mortar took years to be sorted. She is so scatterbrained, always off on her fancy research trips. <laughs> okay, now we have a kitchen key. So I can't go anywhere else. Let's head back to the kitchen. I did get the, so we can get this ready. This is, this is just what I'm like. Although, yeah. Yeah, 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 we got it ready, we got it ready. Is this painting room? The kitchen was on the other side, right over here? Oh, but there are things I can interact with. What am I doing? Oh. Pyrophiles. Fire has the potential to be among the most devastating forces of nature. Despite this, humans have developed the ability to invent, wield, and attempt to manage it. Meanwhile, certain species in the plant kingdom have evolved to adapt and flourish in the face of fire. In areas where forest fires occur frequently, pyrophiles have learned to rely on fire as a crucial part of their life cycle. Facts about pyrophiles. Their seeds typically possess tough shells. Some pyrophiles only bloom when surrounded by smoke aromas from their natural habitat. Interesting. Okay. This one says this might be a tough case to crack. So I'm wondering if the seed is considered tough. Home to the breathtaking sights. Hound tour Wistman's Wood, Becky Falls. Travel by train to Dartmoor. Okay. 
They did say that she found this seed in Wistman's Wood. Oh, a little religious blessing. Okay, we can zoom. Blessed is this kitchen by grace and holy light. May all those who enter find comfort and respite. Blessed is the hearth with laughter and with cheer. May the love shared here be held forever dear. To those who serve the Lord, who seek their sanctuary, remember the year of construction, for this, friends, is the key. That was so sweet. Okay, what else do we have? We have Hazel's Priceless Recipes. Roasted chestnuts. This is a simple recipe, perfect to warm those cold winter nights. You can use any edible chestnuts. They are easily foraged. The main difficulty with chestnuts is that they have a tough shell, but luckily they're easy to crack open with the help of fire. Okay. Simply place the nuts in a pan above the fire and wait until you hear a pop. This means that your chestnuts are nicely roasted and ready to eat. So this seed is rough shelled. We learned about pyrophiles and how some of them need to be exposed to fire and to smoke. We have the Dartmoor poster, which told us that about the Whitman's forest. Whist Whistman's? What's Whitman's? And now we have this cooking book recipe telling us how to soften up a shell. I'm wondering. Oh, here we go. The history of Dartmoor. The professor will present how the moor was once covered in majestic forests and woods, how early settlers came to the area and cleared most of the trees for pasturing using fire as a method of choice. It promises to be a fantastic, fascinating story of how, how the moor, oh. it promises to be a fascinating story of how the moorland we know and love today came into existence. Okay. doesn't tell me that's the mortar he broke. So tell me about Dartmoor. Dear lady, we received your letter applying to study botany at our College of Natural Sciences along with your enclosed drawings. We do not at present and have never admitted women to study at the college. Excuse me. <laughs> Botany is a serious science conducted in laboratories and lecture halls. By all means, continue to pursue your, ho pursue your hobby, tending to your garden and domestic space where it may be appreciated. Positions at the college are reserved for serious scholars whose studies will go on to be well utilized in a career in botanical experimentation. Therefore, with all politeness, we do not offer these valuable positions to amateurs that should otherwise be taken up by genuine academics. How is that with politeness? We have to remember this is the 1800s. However, how is that genuine politeness to go on and jab about things that way? Okay. Um, what else do we have? Before I go back. To someone special. Dearest Hazel, I picked up some roses from the garden to cheer you up. When you're done with your work in the kitchen, would you like to meet up, me up for a cup of tea in the back garden? The pond is lovely this time of year. So sweet. Oh, I have another little, little duck. What's this? <gasps> the ancient oaks stand tall in Wistman's wood. Covered in moss, they withstood the test of time. Though none can tell the sorrows that did befell those trees in Wistman's wood. Oak. Okay. So now we know that it's got some oak. They've got oak trees. Okay. What else do we have? Oh, and look, we've got all these different logs. We've got birch, cherry, maple, and oak. Okay, now we know that Wistman's is oak. So we might have to use oak. We learned that the plant itself... Oh, smokery. Okay, okay, okay. Home smoking and curing. 
The type of wood to use in your smokery is of great importance, though which one to pick depends entirely on your personal taste and preferences. Burning wood from different types of tree produces different smoke aromas. This is due to different chemical compositions in each type of smoke and has a great impact on the flavor of your smoked food. So in summary, choose your wood logs with care. Okay, let's open this up. Smoked food. Oh, and we have a little pot pop, blah, 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 a little pot thingy right there. Okay. And that was the last clue. Okay. So we know the cooking book said something about cracking nuts open. So I am thinking. We go find the plant. We do have a fire started already inside the kitchen. Unattended, I may add. And it was right here. Okay, let's grab this. See, they said to cook it over a fire. We have a fire. Oh, okay. The beauty about this game is that there is so much detail in it that you really need to pay attention. So that as you're doing all the clues, you can put this together. And now we're gonna put this here. And we're going to go find the log. So it said oak because that Wistman's had oak. And we're going to put that in there. And these types of flowers grow with smoke. It's so what I really enjoy about this game is like just the detail, the attention to detail. Like, look at that. From listening to all the detail. Okay. The ash plume is a pyrophile evolved to survive harsh forest fires. Its seed cracks open with extreme heat, and afterwards, the oak smoke from its habitat indicates it's safe to bloom. So we're done with that. Oh gatehouse delivery so let's go to the gatehouse mm -hmm. how do I get out again this way oh just look how pretty like I cannot. Okay, we have to go straight. It's just like, take in, take it all in. It's so, it's, it's very gorgeously done this game. And we have a key to the orchard. Which I have no idea where that is. Has to be one of the many doors that we walked by that wouldn't let us in. Um, I'm wondering if it was the one when we were walking down The one where we got the ash plume seed. 
So we could try that. Is it this one or no? Am I confused? No, that's the formal garden. And that's that it was locked from the other side. Hmm. It wouldn't be this one, right? No, orchard is different from formal garden. Yeah. Okay. This one also said it was closed from the other side. Um, I don't believe there's an entrance here, no. From the other side. And then this is the painting room. Well, since I can't remember where the orchard is, <laughs> I think this is a good spot to end it so I don't ruin the game or spoilers or anything like that for anyone. So, so that was the first look into Botany Manor and we were able to go beyond the demo and show you what a plant outside of the demo looks like how going through the puzzle is like it's a lot of attention to detail in my opinion so if you're going to be reading things like catch on to the importance of everything with the ash plume for example you have like little details in like just the description of the seed itself when you first get it saying it's a hard case to crack which is like a little clue in and of itself then you've got information on like how to smoke out the plant and the type of wood and all these little intricacies and that is basically what the whole game is like so if you really like puzzle games which i am a big fan of when i want to take a break from farming sims or rpgs or any other type of cozy game this one has been such a breath of fresh air being able to enjoy the graphics the ambiance you get the sounds of nature you get the footsteps you get the crinkles you get the water pouring you get to experience what the manor is like and the garden and you get some history behind it too so you're going to learn a lot about arabella green about her struggles trying to get into the field, her passion for flowers as you uncover every single puzzle to unlock every single flower. I know there are times where I get frustrated with certain puzzles and I need to stop because I'm like, what am I overlooking? And this game at some points did have me stuck, but it reminded me to step back, go back over the clues and pay extra attention to the detail and just like really engage with what you're reading. I think with a lot of other games, people just kind of click, 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 click through the dialogue and then they're like, wait, what am I supposed to do? This one, the dialogue is the clues. So just enjoy reading every single part of it. I guarantee this game will bring you so much peace. I know that I was a little bit more crazy with the controls because to me, I don't really get motion sickness and I like to just move the camera around. But if that is something that you would prefer to have on a slower pace, definitely check out the motion control sickness options um, and configure them to the best viewing options for yourself so you can really enjoy this game. It is out now on Steam. It is also going to be out on the Nintendo Switch. I have the Steam copy right now and I love it. It runs beautifully on the Steam Deck. So if you have a Steam Deck out there and you want to play this game docked on your big screen, like I have it right here, or if you want to play it in bed, and I would recommend getting it if that's one of your more preferred ways of playing the game. I don't know what it runs like on the Nintendo Switch yet. 
fingers crossed it runs beautifully on there as well the one little thing i will say with the steam deck i have the lcd version is that it does overheat a little bit and the fans get a little noisy but i normally play it docked because i don't play it handheld because i want to enjoy the visuals of the garden on a beautiful crisp big screen so if you are a docking gamer like i am you will enjoy it a lot if you're going to be playing it handheld however on the steam deck i would recommend just you know taking it in doses making sure you've got a vent somewhere near and just make sure you've got your charger with you um, the lcd tends to run out of battery pretty quickly compared to the oled that's all i have for this first look if you are interested in any other you can check some of the other ones on my channel and also be on the lookout for future first looks as i missed making these and will continue to do a series so that you can check out games with me and see whether or not that's something that you want to invest your time and money in and maybe have me on in the background or just enjoy the game as a whole. From one beach other to another, stay cozy and see you next time. Adios!